Despite having watched a huge number of animes, I never really read manga like that. Until recently, I had just finished Chainsaw Man before it even aired and quickly fell in love with the vibe of reading manga and seeing the work being brought to life on the big screen. But today I have just finished another manga from the famed author of Chainsaw Man, Tatsuki Fujimoto. The manga is Fire Punch, my second ever manga series to read all the way through and it happens to be Fire Punch. I read all 8 volumes, I took it like a POW prisoner being tortured, 83 long chapters of nothing but some of the most out of pocket shit I have ever come across in a long time. And here I thought Denji selling his left nut to pay his Yakuza debt was wild. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Real quick, if you could hit that like and subscribe button, it would mean a lot to me. Now let's get back to it. So I had heard a lot about Fire Punch from the other YouTubers and a little bit of Twitter and the very minimal Google search of Tatsuki's other work. So I had a small idea of what I was walking myself into. But there's just something about being told you're walking into a shitstorm and actually walking through it that you just can't 100% grasp how crazy something really is until you're there. That's kind of how I felt reading Fire Punch. And just to add salt to the wound, I read it all in less than 24 hours. So I didn't give myself much time to heal from the constant mindfucks and what the fuck moments I had to stop at times just to catch my breath and let out a slight chuckle. And I thought to myself, world checkers, this is the peak of your weekend. Got to see it through now. So right off the bat, the manga holds no punches back in the first few chapters. We see the main character Agnes, young kid with his younger sister Luna. I'm thinking, well, this is nice. And then she's cutting his right arm off to feed it to their villages, starving people. Ah yes, cannibalism. It's one way to start a story. So here I am thinking, what the fuck, is this necessary? And well, yeah, it technically is. They are living in a apocalyptic world that has been turned to ice by someone called the Ice Witch. The people also seem to have powers which they call a blessing and themselves the blessed. So Agnes has a regeneration ability which allows him to grow his arm back immediately like as if he's fucking Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z. So he's feeding his village constant stirrings of his arm which I mean fuck it's survival right? So one day an army plane arrives where the main general and his guys are gonna take everyone's rations basically the village's food to fund a war they are fighting but they seem to realize they have been surviving off human meat. Agnes's meat. It's a little weird. The leader of the army named Doma is disgusted and decides they are no longer human for doing such a thing that is a sin and that it strays away from God. So he burns them all with his fire blessing into crispy looking marshmallows or so it looks like to me with the black and white pages. I don't know, maybe I'm just hungry right now. So everyone dies, but the only one surviving is Agnes and his younger sister Luna because she can also regenerate, but not as fast as Agnes. This is where the story is laying the foundation for the main plot. Luna is burning and Agnes is on fire also. He is in immense pain, but he can't die because his powers keep healing him. And sadly, or thankfully for Luna, through her blessing, she can't keep up with the flames burning since they don't stop burning until whatever they are burning is completely gone. So Agnes crawls to her and she looks up at him. A really horrifying scene. And she tells him her last words and that is to live. Instantly, he's traumatized and just replays those words in his mind. Live, live, live. So right here, I'm just like, what the fuck? This is the first chapter and already a village is dead. The main character's sister is dead. The main character is being burned nonstop. It can't possibly get more crazy than this. I mean, come on, Tatsuki. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. The night before they were burned, Agnes and his, um sister were in bed and it looked you know innocent enough at first but then she suggested they did things they shouldn't incest things i must have blocked that part out of my head because well yeah what the fuck i really didn't see that one coming well at least not so fucking early in the story it felt like i read the index and the word cannibalism and incest hit me in the face without warning with how soon this happens you didn't even get to enjoy the story for like two seconds before shit just starts hitting the fan but still i think to myself this must be as out of pocket as it gets Tatsuki Fujimoto can't possibly go any further than this. I mean, how much more fucked up plot points can you really add to a story? Little did I know, Tatsuki Fujimoto was probably doing the deal laugh as he wrote this manga knowing poor souls like myself would be reading it. So Agnes lays there, burning for years because of the flames he was hit with from Doma. But over the years, and I'm talking like 8 years, he finally grows used to the pain and becomes this big ass buff fire guy and eventually later on gets the name. And drum roll please, fire punch, yeah, didn't see that one coming from a mile away. The author I think did a good job overall setting the tone in the beginning for the character's pain, his whole sister moment, and the panels have a good way of showing how he's constantly being burned alive 
and healing and a reason for continuing on a revenge story starts to form here is basically what i'm getting and then by chapter three i'm hit with another curveball but i think i'll let you guys read the manga to get a real grasp of how crazy this gets tatsuki fujimoto really really pushes the boundaries but weirdly enough as i read the manga more and more it didn't get too much weirder it seems like the author just quickly got the wild stuff out in the first like 10 chapters and then chilled out and would occasionally throw in some wild ass panels and semi funny and random scenes but tatsuki is definitely a good writer overall the story is short you may think at times it's just a bit all over the place it's a bit confusing but it slowly all comes together later on the story of madness and pain and how a normal person can be forced into positions out of pain and lose themselves in the process how starvation is the main reason for a lot of the crazy things happening in the story not even a lack of housing warmth or many things but just the lack of food that can create such a chaotic world and such a chaotic person i think that's what i really like about manga since you're reading it slowly you tend to see more about the story than when it's moving fast on a tv animation setting while reading it i tend to see more of the author's way of thinking and how they may be as a person like their humor or their sadness their anger how they may perceive certain things and how sometimes they may put themselves as the main characters which is very interesting stuff i never think about when i watch animated anime i never re really used to think about authors much but reading manga i do tend to do it a bit more now so there is more to the story of fire punch but i'm not here to give you guys a full out review of every damn moment i think you the viewer should give it a read and to really feel and get to experience the craziness that is fire punch i know there are a lot of back and forth feelings about this manga so i decided to do my own research for like five minutes because i'm just lazy sometimes so reddit was my first place to check what do people think about this manga was my main question and it actually had a decent fan base and it looks like people really really liked it i for one am a fan i think overall the shock factor of well you know the beginning isn't enough to make me dislike the anime because you would think maybe he's being too edgy there was many good parts to it some deeper hidden quotes that tatsuki i think put there on purpose like from chapter 14 let me read you this quick one that i think stood out to me those who do not want to just swallow popular opinion either run away or just have no choice but to act as though they have swallowed popular opinion people don't want to stray away from popular opinion out of fear of being different out of fear of being ignored and bullied or whatever and it's some real thought-provoking shit it makes you think instead of just thinking the manga is nothing but crazy shit and a bunch of people dying and when i say a lot of people dying i mean a lot of people dying it's a real gruesome read overall i feel like i might need to go watch or read some slice of life after this one just to cleanse my mind and solve all the sadness and pain and less than questionable moments in the anime it really makes me question if i am ready to read the famous good night poom poom books that i've heard all about i'll probably hold off on it for a bit for now so this manga has definitely been one roller coaster of emotions but one thing i can say is i never really felt bored with it it somehow kept me going it's not as good as chainsaw man i don't think but it definitely has its similarities with both main characters living painful lives the beginning was rough the middle was calm like the eye of a tornado or a storm or some other deep quote i can't really think of anything better right now but the ending though as lost as i was at times leading up to it it ended so gracefully i don't know why but it was just so chill like for a moment i forgot about all the gore and shock factor stuff that i was left almost just in awe for a moment the ending is a 10 out of 10 for me personally so chill and almost spiritual i don't know how to explain it but it just brought me comfort for the characters involved after everything that happened the last chapter was extremely extremely very nice even though i've semi talked a lot of shit throughout this video tatsuki fujimoto is an awesome writer he's unique in his style and i do hope this manga one day becomes animated like chainsaw man and we can all see the story of agnes and his descent into hell as fire punch and the mental battles he goes through and the battles of the people around him how they have to cope with such an icy cold world they lived in that's apocalyptic and horrible the mental struggles they have to go through is just very psychological and interesting to read now i invite you to give it a try and let me know in the comments what do you think of fire punch have you already read it was it good do you plan on reading it or are you just not interested it's definitely not the best manga out there but it's definitely not the worst by a long shot well i hope you liked this short video about fire punch and my experience and feelings with it give a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and i'll see you guys again next time peace